But then we get into the outfit and I'm like, what happened here? Because this really feels super cheap and inexpensive. What the hell is going on here? Hello, my beautiful light brides. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen, and I am the brightest crane in the box. While I was on holiday, the promo for Drag Race Mexico season two just dropped. Now, I did not watch Drag Race Mexico season one, but when I did my video on Global All Stars, which I will link below if you haven't watched it, go ahead and go watch that. I had a lot of people saying I was missing out by missing Mexico. So I watched the promo and I was like, girl, there is something here. On top of it, they got rid of Valentina as a host. And if you watched my video, you would know that the reason I didn't watch Drag Race Mexico is because I actually didn't like Valentina as a host. I love Valentina, I think she's an excellent queen, but I just didn't think that she fit the hosting duties. So now that she's replacing her, and now that the promo just dropped, I said, you know what, let's at least look at this promo. So it is now time to play my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of Drag Race Mexico, the promo edition, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. And make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end where I let you know who had my fabs and drabs of the week. So without further ado, let's find out who shined bright and who faded into obscurity. First up, it's Ava Pocket. And Ava Pocket is coming out in this sort of nude bodysuit with all of the rhinestones on it. On top of it, she's got these giant stars to kind of make this like frilly dress out of it. She then paired that with the biggest red hair to give you this red on red combo. First, I will say I like the proportions of this. Uh, the hair is super big, so it's definitely giving you drag but the silhouette is also kind of disproportionate in itself. She's got this really, really tight bodysuit that's giving you a little bit of that, you know, uh, Britney Spears in a toxic video, but it also shows you her figure so that when these giant stars go on top of it, they really make a moment and they do feel like they are floating on her and not that, that you're trying to cover her up. Sometimes when people do these big things, they look a little bit clunky, but this doesn't because it's got the transparent and it's got different sizes and the way that the stars are placed really make it feel like a dress. It's got a little bit of that camp factor without being too campy but it's also giving you a little bit of that fashion factor which i really like all in all i think this is a pretty strong start and definitely going to be a <laughs> next up it's maria bonita and maria bonita is coming out wearing this giant pink bow as a dress she then paired it with white gloves white boots and this big black bouffon hair. It is definitely giving you a little bit of that 60s vibes, which I'm definitely loving. When I saw the gloves with the hair and the boots, I immediately got thrown to like hairspray. Um, and so I love that little reference. But then after that, the dress that she's paired it with is actually really like cool, modern and conceptual because it does look like a bow. Maybe it looks like a giant present on the bow, but she is the present. Um, I think this is also a really interesting mix of colors, not colors I would necessarily mix with because with this hair and these gloves and these boots, I wouldn't have seen this dress working. Uh, I thought she was going to really push it into that 70s vibe, but she didn't. She really went with a little bit of a clash and went with modern and old school mixed together. And I love that because it is giving you classic drag with new drag with a little bit of theater in there and a little bit of camp and a lot of fabulosity. All in all, I think this look is excellent and I have no comments and therefore she is getting a bow. <laughs> We have Horacio Potasio, and Horacio is coming out with this uh, blonde hair, this like pink and white capelet, this white corset with this white underwear and these white boots. She is not wearing a top, she is not wearing boobs, she is not wearing nothing up there, and I don't know how I feel about it. First, let's talk about the outfit she is wearing, and that is this sort of capelet thing. First off, it's not a lot of fabric, but the fabric that is there is really good. It's got inside lining that is light pink, the outside lining that is dark pink. It's got these cutouts with these little bows, so it's definitely got that like 60s, 70s flair to it. But it definitely feels modern because it feels like this little capelet that you throw on top. She then paired it with blonde hair, which also works with this 70s vibes, and this big white pearl jewelry. Then she continues the white story through her body and her shoes, which all connect really well. 
But the part that I'm sort of struggling on is the fact that she's not wearing a top. Now, if I tried to do this, this would look horrible. But when you have a body like that, you can get away with a lot more. And that is what she is exactly doing. Personally, I would have liked to see her with a little bit of a breastplate, just so that it would have just covered a little bit and given you more of that like womanly vibes. But her paint is so stamped, her hair is so good, and all of her other little accessories read feminine that she kind of got away with not wearing anything at the top. If she didn't want to wear a breastplate, I think even if she did bare chested, but just did like a little like bikini top on top, I think that would have just made it feel a little bit more complete because it just feels a little bit unfinished. The thing is, is that when you're this skinny and you look this good and you paint that good because her mug is stamped and you're wearing this very feminine hair and very feminine details, you could kind of get away with not doing this. I probably wouldn't, but she did. All in all, it is not my favorite, but still good enough to get a Oh. Next up, we have Electra Vandergild. Now, before we talk about Electra's outfit, we gotta talk about the name. We had Electra on Down Under. We had Electra on Sweden. We had Electra on Italy. Do we need another Electra? Apparently we do because we got one. Now, I will say that I wish people would choose more original names, but hey, that is not mine to choose. But Electra is coming out with this black and white polka dot dress that is in this like sort of mermaid style. She's then paired it with this pink tulle on it, which has these little buds on it and this giant hat. She's definitely giving you all of the references. The bugs with the pink definitely makes me think of Hairspray. The silhouette makes me think of Barbara Streisand. Um, so she's definitely pulling all of her old school references. And it m makes me now start to realize that that's probably the theme of this promo. They're all going for like this 60s, 70s vibe. But I specifically like the way that Elektra did it because Elektra did modernize it. She took this idea of what the 60s, 70s were and then brought it up to a new level. Level and made it fashion and drag. Have I seen this silhouette several times? Yeah, I have. But does this one still look really cool? Yes, it does. And it does because of the mix of patterns and textures. There's a real clash coming on that makes it feel much more modern. And that's what I really appreciate. All in all, I think this is excellent and definitely gonna be a bug. Next up, we have Garçon, and Garçon is actually said Garçon. This one threw me off a little bit because obviously I speak French and the pronunciation would normally be Garçon, but there would not be the N-E on it, which really means male uh, in French. But she added the N-E and made it more Spanish, and I was like, okay, work, girl. I love the play on the name that is, you know, a boy name, but she's made it feminine. You know how I was just saying I wish people were more unique with their names? I think this is a very unique name. But Gerson is coming out in this black and white gingham printed bodysuit, and she's got this big green coat on top of it. The bodysuit itself is fully sequenced because it's made from sequenced material, so you know that is a really great fabric. As she's walking and moving in the garment, I'm like, this is really cool. I love the contrast of the black and white with the green. I like the different types of silhouettes that are happening. But once she throws the green jacket away, it is just a bodysuit. Granted, made with really nice fabric, but a bodysuit nonetheless. And I almost wish she always kept it on because it really added that extra pizzazz to it. When you see it in pictures, I think it works even better because she's posing with the green jacket thing that she has on and then really making a moment. The other thing that Gerson has done is giving you this headpiece. Personally, I don't necessarily see what the headpiece has to do with anything, but hey, it does add a little bit of height and a little bit of drama, so I can't really complain. I mean, I'm wearing a headpiece, even though you can't really see it, just to add that little zhuzh. All in all, I think this is a really good outfit and definitely stands out from the crowd, and that is what you want to do. You want to make it your own and stand out. All in all, this is definitely going to be a pop. It's Nina de la Fuente, and Nina is coming out in this a pink dress with this rhinestone top. She's paired with a purple gloves and this big pink poofy headpiece. Now, Nina definitely looks like an older queen, and I don't know if she is actually older or if she paints older. I guess we'll find that out during the season. When I look at it, there's too many pieces that just like don't match for me, and I am a matchy-matchy queen. I mean, I am matching my gloves to my beard. So you can just imagine when somebody is wearing purple gloves, 
gloves, red shoes, a pink dress, and a different shade of pink on her headpiece. I'm just like, what is going on? This is way too much for me. I wish that some of these colors were a little bit more coordinated. Then we look at the dress itself, and the dress itself is nothing special. It really feels like a simple A-line dress. Yes, there is a corset in it, and the corset is well made, but it is nothing like fancy, and that's sort of the problem. It is definitely giving me Mother of the Bride vibes, but I don't think that that is what she is going for. I think she's going for a little bit more of the showgirl vibes, hence the headpiece, um, but it's just like not hitting for me. If I was to redo this, personally, I feel like there's a few things that could have been done to really take it up a notch. First, the hair. I think this would have looked really cute with like a little French wave with some rhinestones in it. Um, I would have probably kept the headpiece because the headpiece is quite uh, cute in itself. I would have done the gloves in pink and I would have added some of this tool that's on the headpiece onto the dress to really give it more of a cohesive look. I then would have done a just a simple stiletto with it and I think that would have really taken this look up a notch. But when I look at it the way it is right now it is definitely not great and definitely not good enough to get a fab. It is going to be a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Ava Blunt, and Ava Blunt is coming out in this sort of like purple capelet with this big uh, flowered headpiece. As she walks, you see the inside of the capelet is actually sort of like this dress thing and is lined with this flower fabric that matches the headpiece. I will say when I originally saw this, I had seen the picture and not the video, and I wasn't really sure. I was like, what is going on here? I feel like this is a little bit try hard and it wasn't really hitting for me. But then when I saw her in the promo video and I saw it moving and I saw that this was a little bit of a peekaboo moment I actually liked it even more I like that uh, it's a little bit of a surprise on the inside I like that it matches the headpiece I like this giant headpiece because it gives you a moment and I like that it feels 60s uh, like a wallpaper sort of thing but also feels modern and I think that that is sort of the trick I also like that this is a full body suit like from head to toe even her heels are all matched up with the inside lining uh, you can really see that this queen is looking at all of the details. All in all, I think this is smartly done. Um, I wish that it photographed better or I wish she chose a different photograph, but either way, it is still going to be a bum. <laughs> Next up, it's Ignusad, and Ignusad is coming out in this really multicolored puffy dress with this puffy hat and these big claws. She is definitely giving you teddy bear fantasy. And although I know nothing about Mexican drag, this is sort of what I was kind of expecting Mexican drag to be, which is like this sort of over the top uh, aspect. And when I wasn't necessarily seen in some of the other queens, I was like, oh, maybe it's just me who doesn't understand Mexican drag. But then this comes out and I'm like, yes, mama, this is what I've been waiting for. I love this creature aesthetic. I love that it's not necessarily human. I love that it's got this teddy bear vibe to it. But I also like that it is like fashion. If you think about it, this is a really cool dress. Now imagine this was done on like a skinny mini model that is like in an Vogue catalog. You know, you lose the face, you lose the, the hair and you kind of gives you a completely different vibe. I love all the different tools. It kind of swallows her shape, but in the best way. If you want to be more of a feminine queen, this is probably not the look for you. But if you want to be this sort of otherworldly thing, I think this works really well. And the other thing that makes it work really well is the way that she's paired it with her face. She said, you know what, I'm gonna lean all the way into this and I'm gonna give you that bare vibe. She painted her face white with the big red lips so you see all the features when she's like lip syncing and things like that, um, but it's definitely giving you conceptual and I love it. All in all, it is definitely gonna be a bop. Next up, we have Yenerini Bloom. I am literally trying to copy the way she said it, uh, but if I read it, it looks like January Bloom. But hey, I am uh, not sure what these people's names are. It is the first time we are meeting them, so I might be butchering them. So if I if I am, I apologize. I will learn the names as the season goes on. Miss Yenerini is coming out in this like, uh, mermaid style a dress that just goes up to just like the top of her waist and, and it is in like this sort of candy cane vibes with a little bit of red and a little bit of gold. She's then paired it with this little bralette, this big hair and this giant purse. 
when you look at it, I immediately got Little Mermaid vibes, and I'm not mad at it because she definitely looks like Little Mermaid if she was, got Daddy's credit card and was going to the shopping mall because this purse really makes it go in a completely different direction. It definitely feels like a little bit of a moment and a little bit more exaggerated, and that's what we want from drag. If you're gonna do pretty, you gotta do pretty in a new way, and this purse really made it go in a new way. It's a giant bow. It feels like it should be on top of her head, but then she's holding it. It's like this whole thing. I particularly don't like this color combination. I don't know if that's supposed to be gold or green, but it's just like really not reading in pictures. But hey, if it was in white, it would have looked like a candy cane. So probably a good idea that it wasn't in white, but it is definitely interesting. I also like that she went with like just a bra at the top. It lets you see her body and doesn't make the dress swallow her up. Sometimes these tiny queens, they get like overthrown by these giant gowns. And she did it really smart by keeping it almost bare at the top. All in all, I think this is a pretty good look and definitely gonna get a pop. Next up is Lexa Fox. And Lexa Fox is coming out in this like sort of tie dye patterned uh, outfit with these big sleeves and these big ostrich feathers around it. She's paired it with blonde hair with pink streaks and long pink stockings. Now, initial reaction when she comes out is, why does she remind me of Daphne from Scooby-Doo? Now, I actually Googled Daphne and they have nothing to do in common, so I don't know where I got this vibe from, but it definitely was feeling that. Miss Lexa is the queen that definitely took the theme and gave you exactly what the theme was, which was like this 60s, 70s vibe, because this definitely feels of the era. Um, you can see that she spruced it up with using ostrich, making this print, having color in her hair. You can really see that she tried to put her personality into it. I think though that the problem is, is that she went so literal with the theme that it kind of just faded into the background and it didn't really feel that special. I think this garment was probably pretty like expensive and well made, but it, she just doesn't stand out and she doesn't make a moment. And this is a promo, you really want it to stand out. On top of it, your promo picture is gonna last basically your whole dry career because people keep reusing it for posters and things like that. So I kind of feel like she got like gypped on this one and should have probably tried harder. I think she should have like really pushed herself out of the box, which makes me think that maybe she's just not an out of the box type gal. We'll have to see it on the season. All in all, I was kind of disappointed with this look. And since I was disappointed, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a drab. <laughs> Next up, we have Luna Lansman, and Luna is coming out with this pink dress with these yellow stockings, pink shoes. She then lined the inside of her dress with yellow as well and paired it with pink hair. Right off the bat, one of the first things I really appreciate is the fact that she's coordinating her colors. You know I love a good color coordination, and she definitely did that. She even did the insides of the sleeve, and that is a detail that people often overlook. But then we get into the outfit, and I'm like, what happened here? Because clearly she was a person that looks at details, but then she can't complete a whole look. Like she's got these little pieces on her chest and I'm like, what are these supposed to be? This definitely looks really crafty. And I don't mean crafty in like a crystal method point of view. I mean crafty in like what the hell is going on here point of view. This really feels super cheap and inexpensive and it feels like you went to like a craft store and bought a bunch of stuff and stuck them on you. It doesn't tell me anything about her drag. It doesn't give me any pizzazz. It doesn't give me any personality. And I'm honestly just kind of over it. And that is a problem when it is the promo look and the first time we are seeing these queens. Honestly, if she did this exact look and just did it in sequence, it would have already been better, but she didn't even do that. It all feels flat, it all feels muted, and it all feels very blah. And for those reasons, it is gonna be a drab. <laughs> Next up is Succulenta, and Succulenta is coming in this A-shaped uh, dress with all the big flowers on it. She then paired it with yellow gloves and big green hair. Now, you know how I said if you just did the exact same dress and did it in sequence, it would look a lot better? Point here. 
this isn't necessarily the best dress but the fact that it is in a sequence makes it a little bit shine and shimmer on the runway this big exaggerated flower on the dress makes it look super interesting and cool now i don't like what's happening at the bottom of the dress they really do look like loofah stuck onto it so i wish there was a little bit more craft put into that and then she decided to pair take this green and pair it onto her hair i love green hair but i don't necessarily know that green hair was the right choice for this i believe had she done the exact same shape but made it in blonde, it probably would have worked better because it would have picked up the gold that's on her gloves and on her dress and really tied it in all together. The green hair does give me a little bit of like Oompa Loompa vibe, you know what I mean? Um, she then did these uh, thigh high boots and she did them in yellow. And again, I don't know why yellow. Yellow just doesn't fit with this color combination. Personally, I probably would have went with white because white is a classic 70s color and it matches the white headband. And she got these like white polka dots here and there. So I think that would have been a better choice, but at least she tried, she put effort into it and she gave you a little razzle dazzle. And that is why I am going to go ahead and still give her a bye. Next up, it's Unique, and Unique is coming out in this pink and yellow dress that kind of has a little bit of a car motif in it. She's paired it with white boots and pink hair. First off, we are going to have to talk about this name, Unique. Unique is such a bold name and a bold choice for your drag character, so you better believe that you are setting the bar really high for yourself, and I am expecting some really great drag that is very unique and very avant-garde. And then she comes out wearing this. Why is she wearing a car? What does this have to do with her name? Uh, and you lost me right off the bat. Firstly, if you were someone like Geneva Carr on her season, making car references makes sense, but here it doesn't. It also doesn't really make sense with the promo. I guess like the Beetle buggy was from the 70s. I don't know, I feel like this was a stretch. Now, if you were gonna do a car, make it more modern, more avant-garde. It makes me think of like, remember Mugler's motorcycle thing that Jimbo did? I think that's a really cool way of doing a car. This just feels like a car print on a dress and it's not necessarily even flattering to her. Then she decides to add these really white thigh-high boots, which I understand the reasoning behind it, but she's a very short queen, so the, these boots really cover her entire leg, and I'm missing some skin. I feel like she should have like cut those boots off right at the knee or right below the knee to really give you the right length, because right now it is just swallowing her up. I like that she is finally showing some skin at the top, which is definitely needed because my eye needs a moment to rest. She's paired it with her, like really okay hair. I'm really missing like that next level. I think this would have really benefited from one of those like sculptural hair moments, you know, like what Gottmik and Plastic Tiara do. I think that would have really helped it take it to another level. Maybe it was uh, something to do with a car, you know, like I feel like it could have really gone there. All in all, there's so much wrong with it that it is definitely going to be a drab. <laughs> And that is the 13 queens of Drag Race Mexico. Now let's get into the reason why you guys are here. You guys are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. Well, my drab of the week this week goes to Linda oh. Lansman. Honestly, I felt like this one was far below the other ones. I wouldn't be surprised if she's a first out queen because if this is your promo look, I don't know what you're going to be showing on the season. But let's wait and find out. But enough about the negative and let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week has to go to Electra. Yes, I know there were some other queens that did some things that were a little bit more original, but all in all, I felt that this was really well done, really well put together, and looks really expensive. So despite it not being necessarily the most original, it is still very cool and very well made, and therefore got my fab of the week. Y'all, that is it for this episode. We have 13 queens for Drag Race Mexico. Looking at this promo, it seems like that we're gonna have some really high highs and some really low lows. This, without even watching the season, I feel like this is gonna be another like Drag Race Sweden where you kind of already know who the finale people are, but hey, you know, you gotta make a TV show, right? Do you want me to watch the full season and give a critique every week? If so, leave a comment down below. And while you're there, let me know, do you agree with my opinion? Do you disagree with my opinion? What would you like to see me do next? I'm reading all the comments and replying to most of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Once again, my name is Neil Noir at Miss Neil Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye bye <laughs>